Welcome back to the lab, welcome back to E for everyone. We've got an awesome next part of the series for you. We are walking through the ESD monitor project and basically we're going to sketch out the schematic that will very likely look, well, about the same a few days in the future. And I'm really, really excited to talk to you about that today. So let's switch over to LT Spice and let's dig into what we have. So you can see we have our 12 volt source with a 10 meg upper resistor. And then we've got our ESD mat and this monitoring node coming off. I've got a little call out here. I think that some of these are incorrect and we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, and then we've got our buffer, which we're gonna plan on for a moment. Our detailed design will determine whether or not this is required. Basically, if the input bias current is low enough on the comparators that I can get like a window comparator or um, two open collector or open drain comparators that we can put on this net without affecting the accuracy of the measurements. And then this is just forcing these to be open collector just because I didn't want to find a more specific spice model. Um, it's basically at that. And then the output is this MOSFET here which is being controlled and I just got a 1K resistor, but ultimately that will be the speaker. We've got this 12 volt source that is turning on and it is actually turning on at the start of the simulation. Then you can see that there is a time where this voltage being sensed because of the mat, the mat's impedance to ground. See it's being a voltage divider. It's coming through the buffer and since we have this set up as a non-inverting amplifier, gain of two, you can see that's being doubled. Now, when we compare that to our thresholds, we've got the upper threshold that we're flirting with and the lower threshold, which we are also between. Now let's take a look at what the error signals look like. You can see that for the lower error, as we're charging, there's this point at the beginning where there is an error asserted. And on the high Z side, let's go ahead and zoom to full. You can see that when we start up, there's no error at time equals zero. But as that mat voltage crosses our threshold, you can see that it does indeed trip. Hmm. And then of course, whenever either of these errors is active because of these diode logic, you can see that we would chirp on power up and then chirp at fail. Now, I don't mind the chirp at power on just because that tells you the thing's actually working and plugged in. Um, and then we can have some LEDs that are illuminated to tell you that everything is okay. So that's basically all there is. Um, it's a couple comparators. This is looking pretty similar to our temperature monitor project, except for, of course, there's no latching behavior here. This is a constant monitor. So we may want to add some hysteresis in here. May want to remove this buffer. We have a few different things to design. And then basically what we're going to do is take this part of the design and what we'll do is we'll just take the whole thing, copy it, and then, hey, you've got your operator monitor. And if you need another one, hey, there's your second operator monitor. So I think this is going to be a great opportunity to use hierarchical design because we have three instances of basically the same design. The only thing we might change is like some of these programming resistors for the different thresholds or maybe this buffer value. So we might break out like maybe one of those resistors to an outside pin, but all things considered, I think we're probably going to just use it the way that it is. Um, so I guess we'll circle back in our next episode where we're going to dive into the detailed design and choose a specific comparator, choose a specific op amp if we need one, get some of the inputs and outputs going. And I might do some of that legwork just to build the parts in KiCad, and then we'll kind of talk through each of the selections. But either way, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to share that with you. So 
Thank you for watching. A special thanks to our Patreon members and our Google channel members. I just really appreciate the fact that you've taken a step and voted with your wallet, so to speak, and said that, hey, EE for Everyone is cool. It's something that you like and you want to continue existing. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching EE for Everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Coming up soon, we're going to be walking through this detailed design for the ESD monitor, and pretty soon here, we're gonna be kicking off our next series, either the inverter or the amplifier. Hey, why don't you let me know down in the comments what you're excited to see. Also on our radar is the awesome suggestion for a DMM. I am excited about that, and I can't wait to get that kicked off as well. That's all we've got for today, so see you in the next one. Bye.